Showtime. BOG, let's go. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of colors by the Marine Corps Recruit Depot, Western Recruiting Region Color Guard. Please welcome former Naleo president from Pontiac, Michigan, the Honorable John Bueno. Thank you. Don't worry, I'm not going to be doing the national anthem. I'm just doing the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, to honor America, please welcome the Seaside Maritime Brass Band to play the Star Spangled Banner. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this evening's host, Naleo Educational Fund Chair and appointed member of the U.S. Census Bureau's National Advisory Committee on Racial, Ethnic, and Other Populations, the Honorable Pauline Medrano. Good evening. Please have a seat. Thank you for joining us at this special celebration of our armed forces veterans, and the many Latino servicemen and women who have dedicated themselves to the defense of our great nation. Patriotism and honor have characterized Latinos in military duty for as long as we have been a part of the American fabric. And the battlefield was one of the first places in this country where Latinos were acknowledged as full and equal Americans. In 1862, President Lincoln established the Medal of Honor the highest service given for distingu distinguished in service, distinction in service. Three of the first recipients of medal recognized in 1864 and 1865 their courage, their courageous actions in the U.S. Civil War were Latinos. Latino veterans went to found the League of United Latin American Citizens in 1929 and the American GI Forum in 1948 establishing close ties between Latino military service and domestic struggle for civil rights protections 
and advances. As the Latino community in the United States has grown to encompass new, new newcomers and increasingly diverse origins hailing from all throughout the throughout the hemisphere, numerous as aspiring and new Americans have found belonging and purpose in their adopted homeland through enlistment in the armed forces. Today, Latino service members are building upon a long and wonderful record of proud sacrifice for the country we love. Hispanics constitutes more than 11% of active duty military services. And as of 2011, over 17% of new recruits. The top reason these new Latino service members cite for joining the armed forces is, quote, to serve my country, end of quote. It is a mission that I know every one of us holds dear and honors and applauds. Mm -hmm. This evening, we pay tribute to the Latino recipients of the Medal of Honor and to, uh, to other outstanding Latino veterans. To lead us in recognizing these individuals, I would like to introduce the Honorable Ron Garcia, council member City of Brea, California, and an Aleo board member. Ron served as Petty Officer, third class, in the U.S. Navy and is a veteran, Vietnam veteran. I would also would like to introduce the Honorable Robert Benya, a member of the Board of Directors of the Edinburgh, Texas Co Co Consolidated Independent School District and the Secretary of the Aleo board. Robert served as a sergeant in the U.S. Mil Marine Corps. Gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, thank you Pauline, and good evening. Thank you friends for being a part of our salute to the armed forces and veterans this evening. Military service can be a difficult and lonely calling. Taking service members far from home, from their family, friends, and also requiring sacrifices of time, effort, and even life. Americans' recognition and appreciation of the significant commitment military service demands is the, best, is the best, most meaningful return on our investment in our country that we as veterans could ever hope for or receive. This evening, we share the stories of some of our most distinguished Latino service members. It's always appropriate when the Navy comes up behind the Marines because there's a lot of um, history between the United States Marines and the United States Navy and we always like to follow the Marines into battle and we want to always thank our Marines for being there to secure the, uh, the area before we arrive. So thank you. <clears throat> Another interesting, uh, 45 years ago, actually uh, 47 years ago, I left from this very um, location on board the USS Iwo Jima on my second tour of duty in Vietnam and my bride is out here somewhere and she came and made sure that I was on the boat and leaving so if she'll, <laughs> if she'll stand up out here please but uh, it was my second tour the Medal of Honor recognizes extraordinary heroism and courage in battle medals of honor are bestowed sparingly for documents, actions for far beyond the call of duty. Recipients have charged into clear danger, organized fighting forces in the midst of threat, and given their lives to save fellow soldiers. More than 40 Latino veterans performed acts of remarkable courage and bravery to make them worthy of the Medal of Honor. The accounts of their valor can be found on the website of the Hispanic Medal of Honor Society. I am honored to share with you the stories of the living recipients of the Medal of Honor. Specialist John P. Baca served in the Army during the Vietnam War and saved the lives of eight fellow soldiers by covering a grenade with his helmet and his body. Sergeant Leroy Petrie who remains on active duty today with the United States Army, was honored for his service in Afghanistan for continuing to fight after suffering serious wounds. During a mission in 2008, he saved fellow soldiers by picking up and attempting to toss away a live grenade. Lieutenant Colonel Alfred Rascon of the Army 
a veteran of, a veteran of engagement in Vietnam, Afghanistan, and Iraq. That's, a, that's what you call a hat trick, ladies and gentlemen. Three, voluntarily placed himself in the line of enemy fire to protect his colleagues. And Colonel J. R. Vargas, a Marine Corps veteran of the Vietnam War. There are no Marine Corps veterans. Once you're Marine, you're always a Marine. It's the only branch of service they, you don't get out of. He was honored for leading his fellow Marines in an extended battle and carrying his injured battalion commander to safety, all while injured himself. He'll be honored on Saturday evening with, uh, with Colonel Vargas, with Colonel Vargas actually attending. Uh, let's express our thanks to those gentlemen that I've just uh, brought out to you. Thank you, Ron. You know, it was um, the desert storm where I uh, cut my teeth, you could say, as a Marine. And I had the distinct duty of what was called Graves Registration. Since the Korean War, the Marine Corps did not have a Graves Registration Unit. So when I was in uh, Desert Storm, I was asked, or told, I should say, because that's the way the Marines do things, <laughs> um, to uh, be a leader of this unit. And I was a sergeant of a small platoon called Graves Registration. And it was our duty to, bring our, to prepare our deceased uh, to be brought home to their families. It is only fitting and tonight that I also bring home one Marine. The Navy Cross is the second highest honor that a member of the Navy, Marine Corps, or Coast Guard may receive. It is bestowed by the Secretary of the Navy for great heroism in combat and was first awarded to veterans of World War I. Today we give special recognition to two outstanding Latino recipients of the Navy Cross. Sergeant Rafael Peralta was born in Mexico City and raised here in San Diego. A patriot who displayed copies of the US Constitution and Bill of Rights on his bedroom walls. Sergeant Peralta joined the Marines as soon as he received a green card and became eligible to enlist. While in service, he became a naturalized American citizen. Sergeant Peralta was on patrol clearing homes in Fallujah, Iraq in 2004 when he encountered enemy fire and was wounded. When his fellow soldiers returned fire, insurgents threw a grenade at the patrol, which Sergeant Peralta grabbed and pushed under himself in order to save the lives of his fellow soldiers. In honor of his sacrifice, Sergeant Peralta received the Navy Cross posthumously in 2008, and in 2012, the Navy announced the naming of a new Arleigh Burke class destroyer, the USS Rafael Peralta. His Navy Cross citation states, by his undaunted courage, intrepid fighting spirit, and unwavering devotion to duty. Sergeant Peralta reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the U.S. Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. Please join us in welcoming Naleo President Alex Padilla to the stage to present an expression of our gratitude to the members of Sergeant Peralta's family. Thank you so much for uh, allowing us to pay you this honor. Uh, I'm going I'm to read the inscription on this plaque here on behalf of the National Association of Latino Elected and Appointed Officials uh, presents the Distinguished Service Award with deepest gratitude to Sergeant Rafael Peralta, United States Marine Corps, in recognition of your extraordinary heroism and devoted service to the United States of America this day, in June 2014, San Diego, California. Thank you.
continuing with the Navy theme and the relationship with our Marines, um, as a lot of folks don't know or they should know, the, the Marines, of course, are a department of the United States Navy. Uh, they've always said it, and I've always agreed, but I never told them, it's the men's department. <laughs> About a year and a half ago, I met a young gentleman in my city of Brea. He was introduced to me by a, a local retailer uh, in, a, in a business in our community. Just met him, didn't have much to say, just talked, visited a little bit. Then I, because his hair was short and he had, uh, his shoes were shiny, I assumed he was a Marine. So we, I asked and he said he was, and then didn't see him for a while, and then I bumped into him again maybe five or six months later. So maybe total I knew him for maybe a year and a half without ever realizing what he had accomplished. And then when I found out I comp what he had accomplished, it reminded me that our heroes don't have to identify themselves. Our heroes are self <laughs> Our heroes never assumed that they're heroes. They were doing, and you've read it in papers for years, they were just doing the same thing that the next guy or woman would have done next to him. Uh, what I'd like to do is introduce <coughs> Sergeant, <coughs> excuse me, Sergeant Marco Martinez, grew up around a military culture as the son of an Army soldier, but was moving in a different direction as a youth. As a teenager, he spent several years as a gang member seen his friends arrested and incarcerated, though made him reconsider his trajectory. A Marine Corps recruiter who Sergeant Martinez met at his high school inspired him to enlist as soon as he was able. Sergeant Mar Martinez was serving in central Iraq in the spring of 2003. Ladies and gentlemen, that was 11 years ago. Wait till you see this young man. You would think he's 18 or 19, much like myself. <clears throat> there was no, it didn't say uh, laughing at that point here. <laughs> Sergeant Martin was served in central Iraq in the spring of 2003 when his unit was ambushed. When his squad leader was injured, Sergeant Martinez took control and he and his colleagues fought their way into the midst of the insurgent fighter's position. From the four insurgents that he personally was responsible for their death, he retrieved an RPG, repelled uh, RPG, rocket propelled grenade, there you go. Uh, so he recovered it from these insurgents that he took out himself personally. He continued on and led an assault that gave his fellow Marines the opportunity to evacuate a wounded colleague, and then ran into the thick of danger using the RPG that he had recovered from the insurgents that he had personally taken out and ended and killed in the, from the, 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 the uh, award that he received is for four that he took out. That day there was 27 total. And that ended the firefight. There was no more folks left over. For his valor, Sergeant Martinez became the first Latino since the Vietnam War to receive the Navy Cross. Please join us in welcoming and thanking Sergeant Marco Martinez. Once again, the National Association of Latino Elected and Appointed Officials presents this Distinguished Service Award with deepest gratitude to Sergeant Marco Martinez, United States Marine Corps, in recognition of your extraordinary heroism and devoted service to the United States of America, this day, June 26, 2014, San Diego, California. Robert, before you guys go away, 
please. Ladies and gentlemen, these are two Nalel board members. They uh, serve their communities in their respective elected capacities. And uh, when uh, the decision was first made to host this annual conference here in San Diego, and just the brainstorm idea of doing something to pay tribute to our men and women of the military, uh, past and present, uh, they didn't skip a beat. And the spirit, the nature, the organization, everything that's moving us here at this event, they made possible. We thank you both for your service. Thank you. And we thank you for your service as well. Um, the uh, Armed Forces Medley, if you haven't heard it before, combines the anthems of the Army the Marine Corps, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard. In honor of the veterans and active duty members with us today, the Seaside Marine Time Brass will play the Armed Forces Medley. And I want to call your attention that as the, each uh, military branch's medley is playing, you'll see members of that branch stand in recognition of that. Please, your attention to the band. Somebody. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're honored this evening to have a very special veteran with us, retired Brigadier General Robert Cárdenas of the United States Air Force. Cárdenas was born in Mexico and moved to San Diego when he was just five years old. 
He began his military career in 1939 at just 19 years old. During World War II, he flew combat missions in B-24 Liberators in disguise over Germany, where he was shot down on his 20th mission. He managed to evade capture by escaping into France with the help of Swiss civilians and the French resistance. After nearly 30 years of service, Cardenas was promoted to Brigadier General in 1968 and assigned to command of Air Force Special Operations Force at Eglin Air Force Base. Cardenas has been awarded numerous military awards, some of which are the Meritorious Service Medal, Air Force Commendation Medal with Oak Leaf Cluster, and the Purple Heart. He retired in 1973. Brigadier General Cardenas, would you please stand so that we may recognize you. Thank you all. And I'm going to ask um, the Low Educational Fund Board Chair, Pauline Madrano, to join me as we uh, share the names of all the active members that are with us in this special ceremony. I mentioned uh, Robert Cardenas, Brigadier General from the U.S. Air Force, already. We're also joined by Fernando Armenta of the U.S. Army. Please rise as I call your name. And if I can ask all you to hold your applause to the end, and we'll applaud for everybody uh, jointly. Andrew D'Alessandro from the U.S. Army, Martinez uh, uh, Francisco, U.S. Marine Corps, Ron Garcia, United States Marine Corps, Bob Hanlon, United States Air Force, James Kimber, U.S. Army, Rafael Melendez, United States Army, Luis Molina, United States Marine Corps, Raymond Navarro, Jr., United States Army. Dr. Jesse Ortiz, Marine Corps. Daniel Reyes, Army. Robert Peña, U.S. Marine Corps. Ron Garcia, U.S. Navy. George Sanchez, Navy. David Secrets. Army, Charles Trevino, Air Force, Ralph Vélez, Navy, Robert Zamora, Navy. Salvador Ramirez, United States Marine Corps. Benito Barrios, United States Marine Corps. Luis Vasquez Cortez, United States Army. Raymond Camarena Lopez, United States Marine Corps. Agustin Medina, United States Army. Nick, I'm sorry, Nick uh, Wogan, United States Marine Corps. Alfredo Moreno, United States Army. Armando Tellez, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Jason Moore, United States Navy. Mark Padilla, United States Navy. Todell Bowers, United States Marine Corps. Phil Reyes, United States Air Force. Mano Lasoira, United States Marine Corps. David Argudo, United States Marine Corps. And the only woman on stage with us tonight, Teresa Garza Ruiz, United States Navy. On behalf of on behalf of many, many a service woman, thank you. And if there's anyone else in the audience whose name we didn't uh, capture at, uh, as you registered and entered into the ceremony, please rise so you too can be recognized. And for the rest of us, let's give them a round of applause.
Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you again to all who have answered the call and served our country in the armed forces. Now I'm pleased to recognize a strong and steadfast supporter of Naleo Education Fund, Toyota, a company that has demonstrated wonderful commitment to our nurturing Latino civic engagement and service to our nation. Toyota is a dedicated and, a, and a, trying to be a very good citizen and is known, is known all over the world for its excellence, its creativity, and for striving to lead the way to a better future for all of us. A longtime partner and the presiding and presenting sponsor host of the Naleo 31st Annual Conference, Toyota is represented this evening by Mr. Anthony Salcido, Vice President for North American Financial Integration. Please join me in welcoming and giving our warmest thanks to Toyota. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you for that warm introduction, I really appreciate it. And I'd like to welcome everybody to the opening ceremony of Naleo's annual conference. Um, it's wonderful to be here. Uh, I have to say that Toyota is proud, very proud to be a presenting sponsor of this year's uh, conference. And for me to, to listen to everything that I've listened to, this is especially humbling uh, to be you know, inside the USS Midway um, this is truly America's symbol for freedom, so I really appreciate it. As many of you know, um, Toyota enjoys a special and long-standing relationship with Linneo, Naleo, excuse me, and also the Latino community. So we're also very honored and grateful to be the number one automobile brand for uh, U.S. Latinos since 2004, so that's 10 years. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, our relationship with the Hispanic community means a lot to us, uh, means a lot to me. Um, and uh, we hope to make that relationship stronger each and every day. Um, we hope that you know, all of you in the audience, um, and especially those helping the Latino community, that you have a very strong and committed partner uh, with Toyota. So I'm thrilled that our partnership with, with Naleo continues to grow. Um, and in this year, um, we have the, the all new 2014 Highlander Hybrid, which is the official car of the conference. And my friend uh, Arturo Vargas uh, will be driving this vehicle over the next year uh, with the idea that, and, and he'll be tweeting about his experience, and the idea <laughs> is that we hope that by doing so, Latino leaders across the country will consider the importance of personal mobility options and the impact of that that, that has on our environment. So being aboard one of our nation's great military vessels, and as I understand it, the most visited naval museum in the world, it really makes for an appropriate setting to honor our commitments and our sacrifices of our nation's active duty military, our veterans, and their families, and it was, it's been such a wonderful tribute um, so far. And I personally, um, on behalf of Toyota and on behalf of myself and my family, I really, really appreciate the service and the sacrifices that you guys have given to our great country. So Toyota is proud to support our nation's veterans, and like any good company, we're always looking for good people. And we have found them again and again in our nation's veterans. So that's why we decided in 2012 to partner with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation to establish the Hiring Our Heroes program. Hiring Our Heroes connects veterans, service members, and military spouses with meaningful employment opportunities to help them leverage their unique and valuable skills as they make the transition back to civilian life. As part of the program, Toyota works hand in hand with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, vast network of state and local chambers and other strategic partners to create a movement. And that movement is to hire military talent in hundreds of communities across America. And guess what? It's working. It's working. So today, to date, Hiring Our Heroes has hosted more than 700 hiring fairs 
in all 50 states, Puerto Rico, and the District of Columbia, and more than 23,000 veterans and military spouses have obtained jobs as a result of this. So this is fantastic. So if you're in interested in finding out more about this very important effort, we have a Hiring for Heroes booth somewhere on this ship. I know it's here. Um, and uh, you know, please pay us a visit. And now it's my special honor to introduce to you four inspiring people sitting here, waiting to come up. And, uh, and I also want to share some really good news. So we know that the commitment our military service men and women have to our country is deep. We know that they and their families make many sacrifices to serve our great country. At Toyota, we wanted to honor those sacrifices and show our appreciation. So tonight, I'd like to announce that we have given $1,350,000 donation to the Marine Corps Scholarship Foundation to create as many as 300 new scholarships for the children of Marines and Navy Corpsmen over the next five years. So this brings Toyota's investment in the foundation to more than $3 million to date. So we're very, uh, very proud of that. So again, we're lucky to have to, uh, with us tonight three scholarship recipients. We have Andrew Coba of Oceanside, California, and sisters, Eleni Sanchez and Alyssa Aquino of Fallbrook, California. And we also have Eleni and Alyssa's father with us, with us, Gunnery Sergeant Pedro Aquino, U.S. Marine Corps. So Andrew Koba and his sister Amy, another scholarship recipient, by the way, are the son and daughter of Captain Javier Koba, United States Marine Corps. When Andrew was three years old, his father came to the U.S. He enlisted in the Marine Corps and gained his citizenship. Captain Koba later moved his family to the U.S. and was commissioned an officer. Andrew credits his father, who served for 18 years, for his drive to succeed. Both Andrew and his sister, Amy, are working hard to meet the high bar their father has set for him. And we know how that works, right? We have sisters and scholarship recipients, Eleni Sanchez and Elisa Aquino, credit their father, Gunnery Sergeant Pedro Aquino, for their commitment to education and their drive to succeed. Gunnery Sergeant Aquino came to the US from El Salvador as a young boy. In high school, the Marine Corps recruiters gained his attention and he enlisted following his senior year. A wounded warrior, Gunnery Sergeant Aquino has served the country, his country, and the Corps for nearly 20 years, including five combat deployments. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your service. So please join me in congratulating these three outstanding young students and their parents. And we have for them their scholarship certificates, which I will present to them at this time. So I just want to uh, make a special thank you to the Marine Corps Scholarship Foundation for making the dreams of young people like these come true. I also want to thank Nileo for having us at this very, very inspirational event. Um, we really appreciate it. 
and thank all of you for everything that you do for the Latino community and our great nation. And please enjoy the conference, and I look forward to speaking to many of you over the next few days. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Salcido and Toyota. We'd also like to recognize the co-host of this evening, evening's tribute to service members and another strong Naleo Education Fund supporter, J.P. Morgan Chase and Company. <laughs> they are represented this evening by Ms. Maureen Casey, Managing Director of Military and Veterans Affairs. Ms. Casey? Thank you very much, Pauline. Um, I am honored to be here tonight on behalf of J.P. Morgan Chase, and I'm being joined by my colleagues, uh, Peter Viegas, um, who needs no introduction to this crowd, the Naleo Relationship Manager from our Government Relations Office, and then Brennan Christ, who is our market leader. Um, I think I need to take one moment. We've acknowledged the service of all those who joined, and I think that, and we very much appreciate that, but I want to take a special moment to acknowledge all of the families. One of my colleagues who's here tonight, Todd Bowers, told me once, he said, you know, he said, service members join the military, their families get drafted. And I, I always remember that, so I wanna give a special round of applause to all of the family members that are here as well. We are honored and proud to be here this evening with our long-standing partner, Naleo, aboard the USS Midway, as we recognize the service and sacrifice of Latino veterans and service members. J.P. Morgan Chase understands the tremendous sacrifices our military members and their families have made for our nation, and there is no group our firm holds in higher regard. These brave men and women answered the call and volunteered to serve, and now it is up to us to help them successfully transition to civilian life and build a solid foundation for the future. In doing so, our firm has established a number of programs centered on employment, education, and housing, all focused on positioning veterans and their families for long-term success. By way of example, Three years ago, J.P. Morgan Chase and 10 other companies founded the 100,000 Jobs Mission, a coalition of like-minded companies committed to hiring 100,000 veterans by 2020. The coalition now has 163 companies representing almost every industry in the American economy. And together, we have hired almost 141,000 veterans. Seven thousand of them are at J.P. Morgan Chase. When we achieved our goal earlier this year, seven years ahead of schedule, the coalition set a new goal to hire the next 100,000 veterans. So we are now working toward that goal. On the education front, J.P. Morgan Chase recognizes the significant role education plays as a pathway to employment and ensuring long-term success for veterans. Therefore, as part of a $20 million philanthropic pledge, we have committed to awarding $1 million in grants to colleges and universities throughout the country. Tonight, I am proud to announce that J.P. Morgan Chase has awarded a grant to San Diego State University for their veterans program. I'd like to recognize and take this opportunity to thank Vice President of Student Affairs, Eric Rivera, for the university's unwavering commitment to student veterans. San Diego State has a long-standing history of supporting veterans and returning service members and helping them further their education. This grant will allow them to enhance their efforts by developing campus resources, student services, and other programs, all with one goal in mind, increasing retention and graduation rates among our student veterans. In addition to employment and educational opportunities, J.P. Morgan Chase is providing homes for award mortgage-free, to those who served and sacrificed. In 2011, we made a commitment to award 1,000 mortgage-free homes to veterans and their families, 
and have so far provided nearly 700 in partnership with great nonprofits like Building Homes for Heroes, a national organization that provides homes and other support to wounded veterans. Most significantly, I'm thrilled to say that living in those 700 homes is 1,000 children. Tonight, I'm honored to introduce U.S. Marine Corporal Josh Lopez. Josh? With Corporal Lopez are his wife, Jennifer, and their children, Josh Jr. and Jillian. I am joined also by Kim Vesey from Building Homes for Heroes. Corporal Lopez was born in nearby Inglewood, California, and joined the Marine Corps in January of 2008. He served in Afghanistan as a member of the 2nd Battalion, 5th Marine Regiment, and was severely wounded in April 2012. Corporal Lopez, while still in the hospital in Bethesda, is serving as part of the Marine Corps Cyber Command with plans to return to Southern California later this summer. Corporal Lopez is a decorated Marine to include earning a Purple Heart. In appreciation for his sacrifice and service, J.P. Morgan Chase and Building Homes for Heroes are honored to welcome home Corporal Lopez and present him and his family with a mortgage-free home in nearby San Marcos, California. So thank you again for the opportunity to join you all. We wish you a very successful conference and look forward to working with you further. Have a good night. Wow, thank you, Ms. Casey. And thank you to JP Morgan Chase. To officially welcome us to San Diego area, we are joined this evening by members of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors and the San Diego City Council. I'd like to first welcome San Diego County Supervisor Greg Cox. Well, I am honored to be here tonight for a couple of reasons. Number one, I, I first want to thank and commend your officers and your leadership for Naleo for the incredibly smart decision that they made to have this event here in San Diego this year, the 31st <laughs> Annual Conference. And I say that for a couple of reasons. Number one, as uh, you have probably seen tonight and you'll, you'll continue to see over the next few days as you have a chance to get out and about San Diego, San Diego is a military town. We are very proud of all of the military that live here, that have served here, that have come through here, and we are very proud of the fact that San Diego County is the, has the largest concentration of active duty and, and retired military of any county in the United States. And we are very, very proud of that. This uh, facility right here, as was mentioned before, uh, has only been around 10 years. They just celebrated their 10th anniversary about a month ago. And it has been so well received by the San Diego region and by visitors that come here uh, throughout the year. This is the most successful uh, military museum anywhere in the United States, and I think that's a tribute to not only the, the San Diego County region, but obviously to the leaders of Naleo who decided to have this 31st Annual Conference here. Secondly, uh, I, I think that uh, it's appropriate to have this event here because San Diego County is a home to one of the most active Latino populations you're going to find anywhere in the United States. They contribute to their community, they're providing leadership in the community, they're being elected the local office, and we're very, very proud of the Latino commitment and certainly the presence that is here in the San Diego region. It's been my honor over the years to serve as a mayor and a council member in the city of Chula Vista and for the last 19 and a half years on the San Diego County Board of Supervisors representing a largely Latino district. And I applaud everything that Naleo has been doing to encourage political involvement. 
Uh, and my constituents are very smart and involved, and it's great to see you working to increase their civic engagement. I appreciate my constituents, and I wouldn't be here without them. And on behalf of the County of San Diego, uh, you'll be glad to know I'm not going to read all the whereases in this proclamation. I'll just get to the bottom line because that's the most important thing. We want to commend the National Association of Latino Elected and Appointed Officials for your outstanding service, leadership, and commitment. And we have declared this day, the 26th day of June 2014, to be Naleo Day throughout San Diego County. Congratulations and have a great conference. Thank you very much, and now please welcome my newly adopted nephew, San Diego City Council Member, David Alvarez. Good evening, buenas noches. It's great to see you all here in my wonderful city of San Diego. Uh, I am proud to represent uh, a large, large uh, percentage of the Latino population in San Diego on the City Council. Uh, I just got reelected to my second term, so I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, thank you. Having a great time here. My parents came here to uh, San Diego, to this country, uh, ended up here in San Diego from Mexico. Uh, as many of, of, of your parents, grandparents, uh, immigrants to this country fueled with that same dream, the same hope of giving their family a better life, and I know that's what we all stand for. But uh, tonight, especially, we need to recognize that those dreams and aspirations that our parents, our grandparents had in coming to this country would not be dreams if it weren't for the men and women who serve in our armed services. So we must recognize them for giving us that dream as well. And then also, all of us, as we go back to our communities, as we go back to try and serve the people that we represent, we cannot do the job that we do if it weren't for those who defend our democracy and who give us the right to be the de de democracy that we are here in America. So we thank them for that. We have a job to do. They're doing their job. They're sacrificing their lives. And the best thing we can do as elected officials to honor them is to do our job best as council members, as school board members, as members of legislatures, and people who serve in appointed positions. Because we have to keep the American dream alive, our generation, and Latinos in particular, are those who are starting businesses, are those who are uh, fighting to make sure that we have uh, good pay for our workforce, are those who are working to ensure equality for everyone and that the American dream continues. The American dream will continue with our work in our respective communities, but it's always thanks to the work and to the dedication and to the sacrifice of those who serve our countries. Please join me in thanking them for their service And finally, thanks to their service, I want to thank you for your service. As, uh, as a big family that we are in Aleo now in my, my fourth conference, uh, it has been a great, great experience every single year, a learning experience, an opportunity to grow professionally, personally, and I hope that you have that same experience here in San Diego. Welcome to San Diego. Thank you very much for being here. I taught him everything he knows. <clears throat> Thank you for being here this evening and being part of tonight's tribute. Let us conclude our program by joining together in song to honor America. Uh oh, what did I do?
theme music for whoever. Well, we wanted to play that music as introduction to the next two speakers, <laughs> <laughs> who I have the privilege of working, wor working with on a day-to-day -day basis here in San Diego. They are two of my colleagues, and they will send us off uh, with great pomp and circumstance. Uh, my colleagues on the City Council, Todd Gloria and Lori Zaff. Please welcome them. Uh, all right, I get it. I'm standing between you and a drink and the flight deck. I understand. Let me just be very, very quick. I'm glad to be here with my great colleague, Lori Zaff. Uh, I'm the City Council President for the City of San Diego, uh, and I'm so proud to welcome all of you to America's finest city. I know you can party harder than that, so welcome to Leo. Let me hear you. Hey. Listen, we are America's finest city, but we're also a proud military town. And I want to thank Naleo for having this event uh, this evening, for bringing together two really important communities here in San Diego, our Latino community and our military community. And if you'll forgive me, I, I'm a third generation San Diegan. Uh, my great grandfather, Jose, came from Puerto Rico to San Diego in 1929. His story is the same of so many who came to San Diego and stayed because why would you leave, right? And so I don't have a home to give away or cars or scholarships or proclamations, but I have amazing weather to give to all of you while you are here. And like my great grandfather, like General Cardenas, who is an American hero, and if you don't know him, Wikipedia him right now because you need to know how incredible this man is, and he is a San Diego treasure, and all of these men and women who have served, we are so proud of our veterans. And their service was critical for protecting and preserving our democracy. And that's where the connection is, right? Because as Naleo does its work all across this country, you're helping to strengthen and to grow our democracy. And you'll forgive me if I get a little preachy for just a moment, but I will have to tell you, in politics, we have that old saying, that if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Am I right? <laughs> and that's why I'm so grateful Naleo is here in San Diego, that all of you are doing your great work across this country, because our issues, I am, as you can guess, part uh, Puerto, uh, Filipino, I'm also uh, part Puerto Rican, Native American, Dutch, only in San Diego. But uh, if you're, when we're not at the table, our issues, issues of economic equality, of access to quality public education, for immigration reform, for equality, and of course, as Latinos serve in greater and greater numbers in our military to care for our veterans when they come home, all of these issues must be remain on the table in front of everyone, and that's what Laleo does. So your work here is important. I'm so glad to welcome you to San Diego, and I'm happy to introduce you to my great colleague who has a great story of her own. I'm very proud to tell you, uh, Lori is the first Latina elected to the San Diego City Council. That was historic. So I give you my great colleague, Council Member Lori Zaff. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I hate following Todd. He's a tough act to follow. Uh, first, I just want to say I am so moved by the generosity of Toyota and J.P. Morgan. I'm just, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for, for caring for uh, the men and women that uh, serve this country. I'm, I'm very moved. But again, thank you all uh, for being here, choosing this great city. I am Lori Zaff, the first Latina elected to the San Diego City Council. I know with a name like Lori Zaff, it doesn't sound like it, but my mom's name was Maria Elena Garcia, and uh, her family came from Mexico. And so, um, you know, on the City Council, uh, we're a diverse group of individuals, uh, both you know, ethnicity-wise, and I'm a Republican, my colleagues are Democrats, Democrats, but we, like you, have one thing in common. We all want to make our cities a better place. We all are working to strive to get to um, solutions that are going to help uh, the problems that we're facing right now across the country, not just as Latinos, Latinas, but also just as Americans. And we have a lot of work, and we have been entrusted um, to to solve these problems, and I, I take it very seriously. We have great working relationship here in San Diego. Um, I love working with my colleagues and to get solutions. So I hope this conference, you get new ideas, come up with solutions, and I do wanna say, if you haven't already toured the Midway, this is a remarkable museum. Um, co please come back and tour it. I actually had the opportunity to it was on my bucket list, and um, I got to fly out and land on the aircraft carrier U.S. Ronald Reagan two weeks ago, and I got three hours of sleep. I am not complaining. Um, it was an amazing experience. Six 
thousand servicemen on, on the aircraft carrier. And I was just so um, humbled and have so much respect and admiration and got to see a little slice of life. So I want to say uh, thank you to, to all of our servicemen and women. And um, again, have a wonderful conference. Thank you for choosing San Diego. Spend a lot of money. We need the tax dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Lori Saff and Council President Todd Gloria. Um, also, we missed two veterans, Louis Runyon, Army, and Armando Loredo, U.S. Marine Corps. If you'll please stand. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our program. Please enjoy the reception. Thank you. God bless America. Thank you. Yeah, gentlemen. Hey, congratulations. Thank you so much. So, San Marcos.